prophecy. For thus saith Yahweh of hosts, the God of Israel, As my anger and my fury have been poured forth upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so shall my fury be poured forth upon you. You see how he's separating the 90% who face his wrath to this small 10% who he's trying to give a chance to, who return back to the land. And he said, listen, if y'all listen to me, I will not pour my wrath out upon you like I poured my wrath out upon the majority of y'all, that 90%. So he's pleading with the 10th that returned back to the land. Do we see this here? Clearly, clearly, the prophets are showing you exactly what Isaiah said. So Yahweh explained to them, My fury, my anger have been poured out, poured forth upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem. So shall my fury be poured forth upon you when ye shall enter into Egypt, and ye shall be an, ex, an execration and an astonishment and a curse and a reproach, and ye shall see this place no more. The Lord hath said concerning you, O ye women of Judah, or that tenth, who came back to Jerusalem. Go ye not into Egypt. Now certainly that I have admonished you this day. Or no certainly that I have admonished you this day. I have told you. You asked me. You wanted to hear which way you should go. Now I'm telling you. For he dissembled in your hearts. Or for ye dissembled in your hearts. When ye sent me unto the Lord your God. Saying pray for us unto the Lord our God. And according unto all that the Lord our God shall say, so declare unto us, and we will do it. And now this, and now I have this day declared it to you, but ye have not obeyed the voice of Elohim of Yahweh your Elohim or the Lord your God, nor anything. For the which he hath sent me unto you. No, therefore, or now, therefore, excuse me, no, certainly that ye shall die by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence, in the place whither ye desire to go and return. Going into chapter 43, why did Jeremiah say this? And it came to pass that when Jeremiah had made an end of speaking unto, unto all the people, all the words of Yahweh their Elohim, for which the Lord their God had sent him to them even all these words. Then spake Azariah, the son of Hoshiah, and Johanan, the son of Korea. These were the leaders of the remnant. And all the proud men saying unto Jeremiah, Thou speaketh falsely. The Lord our God hath not sent thee to say, Go not into Egypt to sojourn there. But Baruch, the son of Neriah, or Neriah, set to thee on against us. For to deliver us into the hand of the Chaldees. Oh my goodness. That they might put us to death. And carry us away captive into Babylon. So Yohanan. The son of Korea. And all the captains of the forces. And all the people obeyed not the voice of Yahweh. To dwell in the land of Judah. Fulfilling the prophecy that a tenth shall return. And they did return. But yet it tells us in Isaiah, he asks, how long shall these people ears wax heavy? How long shall they refuse to be obedient unto you, Yahweh? This is what Isaiah asks in 
Isaiah chapter 6 and 10. And, I, and, and Yahweh told him, how long? And he answered, until the cities be wasted, without inhabitant, and the houses without men, and the land be utterly desolate. Because when he tried to fill the land with the remnant, the remnant wasn't going to listen. And they're going to refuse to obey until it's just strangers occupying Judea. And, the, and Yahweh have removed men far away, and there be a great forsaking in the midst of the land. That's how long they ain't going to listen to me. They're going to listen until it comes to this deplorable condition. That's how rebellious they're going to be. But Yahweh telling them, even though I'm going to destroy the land and men going to be taken far away, it's going to be a tip that's going to return. He's letting Isaiah know, I'm going to make it desolate, but I'm going to let a remnant return, which he did. Out of Ammon, Edom, Moab, the captains who reigned over the forces, uh, Nabuzardan and let some people go back, just as Yahweh said. But yet, in it shall be a tenth. In that land shall be a tenth. And it shall return. That tenth shall return back to the land. And shall be eaten. So he's letting us know why it's really going to be totally desolate. Because the tenth going to return. They're going to be eaten up too. They're going to be consumed as well. They're going to be destroyed and wasted as well. As a teal tree and as an oak whose substance is in them. Even though the remnant of Judah shall return and be wasted and consumed, just as a tree that look as it dies, like Job said, whose substance is in them, or whose substance is in the teal tree or the oak tree, in other words, who still have a, a stump, you can cut the tree down, it's going to cast forth its leaves, but the oak or the teal will still have substance, or it's still going to have the stump. When they cast their leaves, so the holy seed shall be the substance thereof. It's the holy seed that sustained the house of Judah. Even though the tenth is going to rebel against the word of Yahweh, and they're going to be consumed with the sword, because of this holy seed of Judah, if we go to the book of Jeremiah, where Jeremiah is going to further explain this holy seed. If we go to the book of Jeremiah, and uh, we go to chapter 33, it tells us, Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I will perform that good thing which I have promised unto the house of David, or unto the house of Israel and to the house of David. In those days, and at that time, will I cause the branch of righteousness to grow up from David. You notice, a branch shall spring up from the stump. Remember, Yahweh was explaining to Isaiah that there shall still be vitality in the stump. Even though it appears that the tree has been totally destroyed, eaten up, cast away, because of the holy promise I made with my holy servant David and his holy seed that I made promises against, I shall raise up a branch out of that oak or that teal tree. A branch of righteousness to grow up unto David. And he shall execute judgment and righteousness in the land. Okay? He shall execute righteousness and judgment in the land. In those days, Judah shall be saved, and Jerusalem shall dwell safely. And this is the name wherewith she shall be called, the Lord our righteousness. So this new kingdom of Judah, most people don't know why she, which is the bride of Yahweh. Why she is called the Lord our righteousness. Right now when people think of Lord our righteousness, they got this holy or not holy, but they have this religious mysticism behind it. 
the law.